Hey everyone, it's me Aaron Collins and this is another edition of me addressing worldly issues in godly way. Hope everyone is doing well. Hope everyone is in their right mind. Hope everyone is blessed, highly favored, and just, just doing um, well. Um, I realize I haven't been on here in about maybe, I don't know, a few days. I was just kind of relaxing, regrouping, you know. But anyway... Let's just get into the commentary. So, these last few days, I've been hearing about this relatively, well, maybe she's not so new, but she's making some waves in this space right now. She's a white content creator. She goes by the name Just Pearly Things. Just Pearly Things, just... Well, that's her name. Just that's really her name. Just Pearly things. I assume her name is Pearly, but anyway, she made um a big stink when she interviewed a known white supremacist named Nick Fuentes on her platform, and one of the things that was discussed was slavery as it relates to black people in this country. How she was saying that it didn't make a it wasn't that big of a deal how she thinks that, well, she she even tried to backpedal saying that, well, there were some atrocities in it, but she made light of them as if there was some parts of slavery that was good. And she even referred to Alex Haley. She didn't refer to him by name. She referred to him as the guy who wrote Roots, talking about how she believes his book was fictionalized when he was talking about the history of his family. That was really how Roots came about, his his own family Roots, which became the, the TV series that we all know of today. But um, while they were sitting here making jokes and laughing, it really got in the air of a lot of people. We It wasn't until Jason Black of the Black Authority brought it to light and exposed her and let it be known what she was doing. Matter of fact, she, she was um, called in another video of hers where she was, because she's based, she's an American from the Midwest, but she's based in the UK. She was in a video just talking about the co her workers on her channel for her show, which are mainly of African and Caribbean descent, you know, being in the UK, which you now I understand. But she was referring to them as my Africans, and which is another sentiment of like basically like what you own them or something. These are your workers. These are the people that you employ. But you're referring to them as if they were your property. But once she was exposed and brought to light, she went on the whole apology campaign of explaining herself and basically pretty much doing the white splaining. And went into full Karen mode, pretty much. Talking about how what she was saying was taken out of context. And so many, this is what happens a lot of times when particularly Caucasian content creators and basically reflective of what they've done, when they get caught doing something that can be considered racist or something that's very discriminatory in nature, they always feel the need to explain themselves and justify what they did. Want to talk to Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson so he could teach them the era of their ways and you know all the all that stuff. But I'm going to go on the record and say you're a grown ass woman. You should know better. You should know better than to say certain things and make light of certain situations. Now, racism. Racism has never been funny then, and it's not funny today. So it wasn't until she got on... Her history, basically breaking it down, she tried to get on board with the mainstream manosphere, which is actually a... a well, it's an all-way white organization, 
and she was running out of there. She she didn't make the cut there because they didn't want her because they didn't want to be to deal with a woman. So she came over to the Negro Manosphere, which is where they get their name, ironically, and they welcomed her with open arms. And it it basically starts with this entire whole idea of accepting white validation. Bottom line, she, like so many of these other content creators that are of the vanilla complexion, have studied us, have seen how we carry ourselves, and then they come over to our spaces and pretty much set up shop, and many times we let them. Because once again, you want to, you want to have the validation of the dominant society, the mainstream culture, at the expense, uh, expense of your own. In the meantime, they're making all the money off your culture and off of you and off of us. While I'm not necessarily faulting them for being who they are and wanting to make money, I fault us for allowing them to be comfortable with the disrespect. See, a lot of times they see how we treat each other as a people which is not very nice. They, they see how the, the colorful language that we use toward each other, they see how we disrespect each other, whether it be on TV shows or YouTube or anywhere else. They see that and they figure, well, well, we can do it too. And the thing is, the difference between them and us is many times they make money off doing it. They make money off of black culture, black disparity and the whole gamut of that thing. Many times though, I see this too also on YouTube, we allow them into our circles and take, take for example, once again, yes, I am using the Negro Manosphere as an example because it happens all the time. You've been so quick to throw black women under the bus, destroy black women's self image, talk about how black women are not submitting to black men and they need to stop wearing makeup and weave and wear their natural hair. But you let this white woman come in here practically disrespecting you to your face, disrespect the whole culture and making light and making fun of our history and ancestry. But you just pretty much welcome her and just give her a pat on the back and, and just even justify her wrongdoing by say, oh, she was just telling jokes. And in the meantime, you think you're getting, they you get your butter biscuits and a pat on the head yourself. This is a, the type of behavior within our community that it actually infuriates me. It triggers me to the point where it's like you almost want to just, just throw in the towel. But I, I can't do that because I feel like I need to be one of the examples of love in our community who actually want to do things to better our community. And I've said this before. I try to lead by example. I try to, to not talk about it. I really do try to be about it. And the more we keep disrespecting each other, the more we keep showing self-hate, the more we keep on just getting on national platforms and just making an embarrassment and a fool out of each other, then people like Just Pearly will continue to look at it and find a way to financially be compensated for it. Now, some of you may say, well, she's employed black people. Yeah, I get that. She's employed black people. Many of these companies in the world that we have today employ black people because a lot of them are white owned. That's not the issue I'm getting at because I've worked for white owned companies before. As a matter of fact, I do now. I had no issue with working for white people. I just wish more of us would get up and support one another too financially and, and support each other's business and support each other's channels and, and and stop disparaging each other and doxing one another. I wish we could do more of that. I wish we could put black women and black children in businesses for themselves. I wish we could all do that collectively. And personally, I think we have the ability to do it, but we don't. Because black dysfunction is basically profitable. It's something that's, that's, that's basically, it, it draws a crowd. Whereas with 
black education or black truth, a, a black excellence period is frowned upon and just you know shunned away from. Because if it's not talking about the latest trend or who shot who or who pulled up on this person and, and this, that, and yada, yada, then it, it, it's not, it's falling on deaf ears. And I know I've had this conversation before. I've talked about this thing before. Personally, I wish I could stop talking about it. But the more we keep having these sorts of issues, the more we keep doing these things, the more it needs to be talked about because... It's going to come a time where we may just have to separate even among, amongst each other. Separate from the ones who want to keep up chaos and keep up destruction within the community. Separate them from the ones who are trying to build the community. We may have to do that. Now, some of you may watch this video. I may get some flack for this video. And, and the, the subject matter is pretty controversial. But how is it that the stuff that I'm saying could be considered controversial, but you let Just Pearly get up there and literally laugh in your face and disrespect your entire existence. But that's not controversial enough to you. So anyway, I mean, something's got to give. But y'all, you know, let me know what you think. Get in the comments. Let me know if I'm saying something that's making some sense. If I'm saying something that you've heard before and maybe I need to shut up. I don't know. Let me know. You know tell me how, how you feel. And while you're at it, hit the bell icon to be notified when I drop more videos and support the channel. PayPal.me forward slash Real Land Collins as well as Patreon.com forward slash Real Land Collins and Cash App dollar sign the Real Aaron Collins. You know, um, I say this once, I say it again. I want better for us. I really do want to see us do better. But if we keep going at the rate we're growing, I mean, if we keep doing the things that we're doing to each other, I don't know what to say. It's going to literally take, well, you know, it's going to take a collective effort on all of us throughout the diaspora. So, there you have it. So, that's really my two cents on Just Pearly and her antics. I'm quite sure she'll still continue to be a presence on this platform. No surprise there. But that's um the whole gist of it. That's what I wanted to say about the situation and about what was done. But anyway, you know, shout out to all the other content creators, all the black content creators who are out there doing something, making a name for themselves. I mean, all of you out there that's trying to uplift the community, not just in the 3D world that we live and breathe on, but also in these YouTube streets as well. You know who you are, you know? But anyway, you know what it is. God loves you. I love you. Let's do life. See you in the next video.